and this film will be taking a look at 3D, CV and interpolation splines. 3D splines can be created through any point in space. While this makes 3D splines really flexible, it also makes them really difficult to control. Let's start by taking a look. I'll come up here to the sketch tab and I'm going to create a 3D sketch. There's no need to pick a surface plane, we can create points anywhere. I'll come up to Control Vertex Spline and I'll just pick some points for my spline to go through. Now you can see here that it's kind of difficult to know what that spline is going to look like. So the first tip I want to give you is just to align yourself with one of the views before you start creating a spline. Let's try that again. We'll create a spline through some points. I'll right click, choose Create, and I'll choose OK again to finish out that command. You can see that all those points have been created parallel to the view that we were looking at. So this is kind of an easier way to control your splines. Now we can constrain our splines. So if I just turn on the plane visibility here, we can choose a dimensional constraint and we can pick any point on our spline and refer it back to one of those work planes. That's great action and I wish we could do that with 2D. And the last thing I want to show you here is that you can also mirror within this space. So let's take our spline, choose our mirror plane and choose apply. And there we have our spline mirrored across that work plane. We can click and drag our splines within the 3D space and they'll move accordingly. If you want more accuracy, you can also right click and choose 3D move rotate. This will bring up the precise input box so you can move things exactly into position. You can also drag in a particular direction using these handles. So a cone will allow you to drag just in a single direction. The ball will allow a free move in any direction you like. And clicking on the shaft here allows you to do a rotational action. I'm going to right click and choose OK to commit to that move. So you can see that whilst you have no sort of limits with 3D splines, actually creating something useful is quite tricky. So in practice, we would usually use 3D splines to create geometry between 2D geometry. So I'm going to finish out this sketch. And in fact, I'm going to delete that because we're done with that now. I'll turn off the view of this plane and I'll just pull down a couple of sketches I've got prepared already. So I have two 2D sketches. And what I want to do is create a blend between these two sketches. And I'm going to do that with a 3D sketch. So I'll come back up, create 3D sketch, and I'm going to choose a CV spline. And I'm going to select off this point right here. And I'm just going to zoom in so you can see this. I'm going to select again off this point right here. And you can just see that go yellow as I hover over it. I'll right click and choose create. Now Inventor's automatically projected those two points from the 2D geometry into the 3D geometry. I'll right click and choose OK. Now in order to get this to blend, I'm going to need a couple more vertices. So I'll right click over this and choose insert vertex. I think I'm going to need three vertices in here. So I'll just click until I'm done. Choose OK. Now we can use our constraints to produce a nice blend curve here. So I'm going to choose the include geometry tool. This is a bit like project geometry in 2D. So I'll choose include geometry, select this 2D spline, select this 2D spline and choose OK. So now I have these 2D splines in 3D space. I can now use my constraints on them. So I'll come back up to my G2 constraint again, choose my blend curve, choose my first input, and then choose my blend curve again, and choose my second input. So that's given me a nice blend between these two curves. And I've got some control over that using the CV handles right here. Let's select the curves we're dealing with. Right click and choose display curvature. So this is going to give us the porcupine graph here. Now what we have here is definitely G2 continuity between these curves. We've got a nice tangent relationship right here. We've got exactly the same radius as we go in. It's a bit difficult to see acceleration to create a G3 curve here. Now again, there's no G3 constraint in Inventor that we could apply. So it really is a case of just pulling these around until you get a sort of nice looking relationship kind of thing that you're after, nice smooth acceleration going in and out. It's worth noticing that you can also grab the CV control points on the 2D splines, but you won't see the update until you hit the update button here. So you can use 3D splines in this way, create nice blend curves between 2D inputs. I'm going to choose finish sketch and let's turn the visibility of these off. I'm just going to show you one way of using an interpolation spline. So I have some geometry here that I've created already. 
Again, this is 2D geometry we're going to use to control our 3D spline. So I'll come up here and choose Create 3D Sketch. I'm going to choose this time an interpolation spline. And I'm going to start clicking on these points. And once again, Inventor is going to automatically project these points into the 3D sketch for me. And as I come back over here and hover, you'll see that the one thing we can do with an interpolation spline in 3D and 2D is we can create a closed loop. You can't do this with a single CV spline. You'd have to create multiple CV splines to create a closed loop. So I'm going to select there. I'm going to right click and choose OK. So now we have our 3D sketch that's controlled by our 2D geometry. And we could use this to create a surface. I'm applying a patch here. And then we could use our surface to create a solid. I'm going to use the thicken tool. And all the time, this is completely controlled by our sketch geometry. So if I turn on the dimension visibility here, we can change this dimension constraint, put in a different value, hit update, and we can see our parametric updates happen.